Hello and welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of instructional videos for the UK Radio Amateur Examinations. I'm Rick Hall, G4PGD, and today we're going to tackle syllabus item 2D1, which we've called capacitors and dielectrics. So starting at intermediate license level, there are three physical phenomena that dominate electronics. These are resistance, capacitance, and inductance. We looked at resistance for foundation level, and so now at intermediate level, we'll turn our attention to capacitance. The graphic shows three capacitors with charge carriers accumulated on the plates. Capacitor one has the smallest capacitance as although the area of the plates is equal to capacitor two, the gap between the plates is greater and consequently the charge that gathers on the plates is smaller. Capacitor three has the largest capacitance because its uh, gap, its air gap is the same as capacitor two, but it has larger plates. The charge on any of the three capacitors could also be increased by increasing the voltage across the capacitor. Note that increasing the voltage does not change the capacitance, which remains the same, whatever the applied voltage. It simply increases the charge by forcing the charge carriers to be clumped more closely together. This is a bit like putting air into a scuba tank. Increasing the pressure puts more air into the tank but doesn't increase the volume of the tank. The material between the plates is called the dielectric. It can be any insulating material or no material at all. Types of dielectrics include a vacuum, air, paper and mica and many other materials depending on the application for the capacitor. Dielectrics have the effect of multiplying the capacitance compared to a vacuum, uh, which is otherwise called free space. This multiplication effect is called the relative permittivity, denoted epsilon r, and is of course just one for a vacuum as we are comparing a vacuum to itself. For air, epsilon r is approximately 1.0006, such a slight increase over a vacuum that for practical purposes, we normally consider it to be the same, i.e. one. For paper, epsilon r is approximately two. And for mica, epsilon r is approximately four. And dielectric materials exist with relative permittivities in the thousands but that's beyond the scope of this course. By the way, the relative permittivity used to be called the dielectric constant, and this term is still often used. So, summarising, a capacitor stores charge and normally consists of two metal plates separated by a dielectric material, which is an insulator. The ability to store charge is capacitance and is measured in farads, unit abbreviation capital F. The dielectric material between the plates has a multiplying effect on capacitance compared to a vacuum. Capacitance is proportional to plate area, or more correctly, the area of overlap, and is inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. The closer the plates are together without touching, the greater the capacitance. In high voltage applications, if the plates are too close together or the dielectric material too weak, as an insulator, a spark might jump the gap, which is a bad thing. So capacitors not only have a capacitance rating, but a voltage rating as well. Moving on to full license level. For the full license, we need to remember that 
this multiplication effect is called relative permittivity, epsilon r. That is the permittivity relative to free space. If we multiply the permittivity of free space, epsilon zero, by the relative permittivity, epsilon r, for r dielectric, we get the absolute permittivity, k, for the dielectric we're interested in. We can write this mathematically as k equals epsilon zero times epsilon r. And we can use this absolute permittivity, denoted as k, to calculate the capacitance of a physical capacitor using the formula shown, which is in EX309. C equals K times A divided by D, where C is the capacitance, in farads, K is the absolute uh, permittivity, epsilon zero times epsilon R, and A is the area in meters squared. D is the distance between the plates in meters. If you are performing calculations, remember that the fundamental units, meters and meters squared, must be used. Let's do a question. A capacitor has two plates, 0.1 of a millimeter apart, with a mica dielectric that has a relative permittivity of five. Each plate has an area of 0 0.08 meters squared. Given that the permittivity of free space is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter squared, what is the capacitance? Well, first calculate K. K equals epsilon zero times epsilon R, which equals 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times five, which gives us 4.425 times 10 to the minus 11. Then C equals K times A divided by D, which equals 4.425 times 10 to the minus 11 times 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.1 times 10 to the minus three, which gives us 35.4 nanofarads. The syllabus text does not mention epsilon zero and epsilon r, although these terms are given in EX309 formula sheet. It may be that you'll be given the value of k directly, or you may need to calculate it. In the example we've just done, the answer is given quite precisely so that you can check your calculation. In reality, capacitors would normally deviate quite significantly from their nominal value, and so such precision would be unusual and not necessary. For syllabus item 2A1 at foundation level, we determined the ampere as a massive quantity of electrons passing a single point on a wire in one second. This quantity of electrons, or unit of charge, is known as the Coulomb and has the abbreviation capital C. So, a Coulomb, therefore, is the amount of charge, and we know that the movement of charge is current flow. We also know from Ohm's law that the current flow depends on the voltage. So it follows from this that the amount of charge that will accumulate on the plates of a given capacitor depends on the applied voltage. The greater the voltage, the greater the charge. The relationship of the charge Q to voltage V is Q equals V times C. You will find this formula in EX309. Now, it's an unfortunate coincidence that C in the formula is the commonly used variable notation for capacitance in farads. And the abbreviation for the unit of charge, the Coulomb, is also capital C. It's worth noting that uh, it's a common practice to differentiate in text between variables and unit abbreviations using an italic font for variables and an upright font for the unit abbreviation. Another example would be 
VV, that is V volts, where the first V represents a variable, for example, 6, and the second V is the uh, unit abbreviation for volts. As the formula Q equals V times C is a three variable formula, like Ohm's law, V equals I times R, you can use the triangle method to change the subject of the formula if you wish. Let's do a question. A 16 microfarad capacitor is connected to a 100 volt power supply. What is the charge on the capacitor? Q equals V times C, which equals 100 volts times 16 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, which works out to be 1.6 millicoulombs. Another question. A 500 microfarad capacitor is disconnected from the power, but it has a residual charge of 400 millicoulombs on its plates. What is the voltage of the capacitor on the capacitor? Here we use a triangle to change the subject of the formula. V equals Q over C, which equals 400 millicoulombs divided by 500 microfarads, which works out to be 800 volts. This illustrates a safety point that is covered in syllabus item 8A1, that capacitors can contain dangerous electric charges and must be discharged before working on equipment. So, summarising. Capacitance depends on the area and separation of the plates and the permittivity of the dielectric. A Coulomb, unit abbreviation capital C, because it's named after Charles Augustin de Coulomb, is the SI unit for a quantity of electricity or charge. Q is commonly used as a variable for quantity of charge and is given by the current times the time. Q equals I amps times T seconds. So that concludes syllabus item 2D1, capacitors and dielectrics. In the next video, 2D2, working with capacitors, we look at the equivalent capacitance of a number of capacitors in series and in parallel. Thank you for watching. <laughs>